In this film I'm going to have a look at some basic locomotive decoder programming. So the little C1 Atlantic I've got over there has been fitted with a Lent Silver 21 decoder and it's running on factory settings. So as you ramp the speed up the locomotive will accelerate and decelerate using settings with inside the decoder that determine just how much power it's going to give the motor. So I've transferred the loco onto a set of rollers just to illustrate the point a bit clearer. So as you accelerate the loco will accelerate up. Slow it down. The decoder will meter power into the motor so even if I ramp up to maximum, it will accelerate up using its own information. And it'll get quite loud. So we'll slow that down. So what I can do with programming is change the whole behaviour of the loco. So I've placed the locomotive on the programming track, which is wired to P and Q on the base unit, the LZV100. And if we go into the programming menu, so press F, go to PROG, P-R-O-G, and enter. Enter again. And let's have the direct access menu in here, so DIR. If we enter into that, you can use plus and minus to scroll through the various menus. So there's a number of things within this direct access menu. First one is the address of the locomotive. The second is the maximum speed, starting voltage, STV, and that is the minimum power that's provided to the motor to get it moving. Deceleration and acceleration. So we'll look at the address first, go into there, enter again to read it. L on the screen just says it's doing something and you can see that the loco chunters down the track while it's working. Found address 3, so what I'm going to do is clear that, give it the cab number 251, enter that, we'll send that in. Just out of interest, it's actually to give it a four digit address, it's changing a number of things, so you've probably heard of the configurable variables, uh, they are the things that determine exactly what the decoder does within the loco. And the direct menu here is changing CV1, which is the two digit address, CV17 and CV18, which are extended address, so they give it four digit addresses, and CV29, which is a major configuration CV. So basically what all that's done is allow us to give it a four digit locomotive address. Maximum speed, so what I'm going to do, I'll go in and read the maximum speed. So it's coming up at 254, so we'll do all this kind of work in conjunction with the locomotive decoder manual, so you know what the factory settings are. But in this case, uh, I won't just change that, I'm going to put it down to quite a low maximum speed. Well, let's go for 150 on there. Oops. Starting voltage, I'm quite happy with where it's starting at. Deceleration delay, let's put that in, we'll read what that is at. You can always take a note of what the value are, is and you can put it back if you're unhappy with any changes. So the deceleration rate is come up with a value of 5. What I'm going to do is clear that and put in quite a large value. And I'm going to do the same with the acceleration rate. So we'll read it, value of 6. So if we clear that out and put in a value of 50. Now I've looked at the manual and I've sort of guessed at figures that I'd quite like to put on. To come out of the menus, you just keep pressing escape. And we'll go back to the main track. So. So I now have the locomotive back on the main powered track. I'm going to 
clear that and put in the new address I've chosen, so 251. The first thing we're going to notice is a big change in the performance. So if I ramp up the speed to the maximum, you see that the locomotive now accelerates and it's going to keep accelerating until it gets up to that new maximum speed that I've put on it. And deceleration as well has had an effect. So it's not going to stop quickly. So with the locomotive on the rollers now we can accelerate it up and so I've put it now up to the maximum speed. And you see that it's accelerating up. It's going to take a bit of time to get to the top there. And similarly, the deceleration is reduced as well. I'm just holding the tender because the pickup's not great on this uh, set of rollers today. Just want to keep it going. Right, so you see there's a big delay in deceleration now as well. So it's a nice way of tuning locomotives to see how they're, they're going to behave. The beauty about decoder programming is there's nothing there you can do that's going to cause any damage. However, you can have some odd effects, so you might have some weird accelerations and odd top speeds. So if all else fails, go into the programming track And then from this main menu here, go down one to reset. Now this is a reset for lens decoders. So it's got a number of CVs in there that are specific. So if we reset that, you'll see it goes through a number of values there and resets them back to factory settings. Now uh, different decoders will have different reset processes, so just read the manuals uh, when you're looking at the particular decoders. So we will find, however, that the, as part of the reset it will have taken the address back to 3. So if we go in and read the address, we're back to 3. So just remember to put the address back to what you wanted it to be. Pull this over to the main track. Right there on the main track. Oops. We're not on the main track, however. Let's come back. There we go. So we're back to factory settings on acceleration and deceleration. Deceleration is one to watch because you do want to be able to stop locos um, before they slam into the buffers and things. So tailor your acceleration and deceleration to the size of layout that you've got. There's no point in taking 500 yards to get up to maximum speed on an 8 foot by 4 foot layout. Playing with the decoder setups is not one of those things that you have to do. Um, most manufacturers from the factory will put a, a decent set on a locomotive. And even when you're using plug-in decoders, um, the factory settings are usually pretty good. Um, the guys that are designing the locomotives do design them to a speed range and a voltage range. So all of this programming, it's good fun if you want to learn it. If not, um, you can quite happily ignore it because the locomotives still drive beautifully without messing around too much with the settings.